Hello, Elise here and today I'll be taking you through my February bullet journal setup. Even though February is the month for Valentine's Day, I didn't want my planner to be too heavy on the lovey-dovey romance stuff, but I did want to somehow incorporate it this month. I wanted to focus less on romantic relationships with others and more on fostering a healthy love for myself. So I took inspiration from a series of pages I did last year that I named my ultimate motivational spreads. If you haven't seen them, I really recommend you go and take a look. It's basically a chunk of pages dedicated to uplifting and motivating yourself. Oh, <laughs> I'm not sure what that was. I think it's my other half laptop thingy. Anyway, um, basically a chunk of pages um, for motivating and building your confidence, self-love and self-worth. I referred back to my pages so many times last year when I needed a pick-me-up and they're definitely some of my favourite pages that I've ever created. I'll link that video in the description below so that you can take a look. But basically, I decided to go with the same theme because since I made those pages, bumblebees have reminded me of making sure that I'm taking time to love and care for myself. So I thought that'd be a great theme for Valentine's month. I've actually made a little challenge this month that I invite you to join in with me. Um, it incorporates this idea of nurturing yourself and I'll show you that a little later on in this video. So stay tuned. Ugh, that's, <laughs> that's cheesy. Before we continue with February, I just wanted to show you how January has turned out so far so that you can see how the spread looks, spreads, spread, spreads, spreads look once they're filled in. So before we continue setting up February or start, depending on how I edited this video, I just wanted to um, quickly show you how January has turned out so far. And it's definitely the best one well, personally, I think it's the best one I've ever done. Um, just because I like the simplicity of it and the layout and the colours and everything like that. So um, I'm really, really liking this whole sort of dashboard layout with the monthly log here, important dates down here. I've got space to track my goals, highlights, blah, 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 notes and tasks. And then my productivity tracker, which is really starting to come together. I really, really enjoy using this because it really pushes me to get more done and um, I can also just sort of check back when I last did something, so that's really handy. Um, my everything tracker that tracks my mood, energy, sleep, pain, whether or not I'm poorly and my productivity. And then I've got space down here to uh, make any notes about anything that might have affected one of these things. Um, I've got my habit building and look! Look at the planning streak, <laughs> it's going so well at the minute, I'm really sort of hitting the, the uh, I told you I've hit my sweet spot with my planning, um, I think it's how I built all the pages up and that sort of thing but I'll talk about that later. I've got a page for how I'm feeling which I found really really useful because you can't always tell people how you're feeling so it's nice to have somewhere to write it down. I've got my meal log. I also added some numbers on the side where I track my snacks from one to five. If I had a lot, a lot, a lot of sugar, I get a five. And if I didn't have any sugar, I get a zero. And I've got my line of day, my gratitude, uh, successes and improvements. And then obviously I've got my dream log. And then at the end of this month, I did um, some art progress. Uh, you might have seen me draw this one um, if you've seen my art video. Um, but yeah, it's not filled up yet. It's not fantastic, it's not brilliant, but it's, it's, I'm learning and I'm getting there. So <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see what happens. The other thing I wanted to mention is I have been asked so many times about um, how I do my hand lettering and that sort of thing. Um, and I have uploaded a tutorial for that. Um, with some tips and tricks, so I will link that up here somewhere and in the description below. Okay, so that's last month. Let's get straight on into February. <laughs> so I've kept my monthly setup exactly the same as last month because I loved it so much. So I won't talk you through the whole thing again. Instead, I have a little tip for any mums with children that are getting a bit older and have started to maybe pull away from you a little bit. My eldest is now nine and he likes to spend most of his time out with his friends. 
And don't get me wrong, I'm I'm glad he's spending more time with his friends and he's getting out and he's, you know, becoming a little bit more independent. Um, but I was sort of, well, not sort of, I was really missing spending quality time with him and being able to talk to him about something other than Lego Ninjago. <laughs> This is driving me mad, Lego Ninjago. Anyway, um, then we crowned him come. Then we came across a little animated TV show that we've been watching, and it's been an absolute lifesaver. It's been so good for bonding. It's about two little lava or larvae, I'm not sure what you'd call them, and um, they're best friends. They've got a sort of love-hate relationship, a bit like Itchy and Scratchy, and they get up to all sorts of various hijinks. And it's actually pretty funny. Um, so it's quite fun to watch as a parent because you can actually engage with the story and without it melting your brain, <laughs> and uh, you can have conversations with your child about it. So a lot of the episodes have meaningful messages. So you can talk about friendship, love, romance, morals, what's right and wrong, conflict resolutions, and many, many more things. So it helps you have discussions about deep and meaningful things without them getting really bored. It's also a nice way to get your child to open up to you about things um, in a relaxed atmosphere. One of the best things about this program is that each episode has about 15 mini episodes that are only two to three minutes long. So you can just watch a few if you've, you know, short of time or you've got lots to do. And it's called Lava. It's on Netflix. Give it a go. I'd say it's appropriate for maybe five to 11 year olds, but I'm 28 <laughs> and I really like it. So I suppose it could be for any age, really. So, yeah, if you end up watching it or you've already seen it, let me know in the comments about what you think. And um, yeah, if you like it, because I really like it. <laughs> Here we're onto my productivity tracker. I went through how to set it up and how it works in my January setup. Um, and I also did a little demonstration of how to use it. So I'll link that video below. But for now, I thought we'd do a tiny bit of art. I'm trying to be mindful of the fact that sometimes people want to recreate my spreads, but they feel like they don't have any artistic ability. So I've been trying to keep decorative elements as simple as possible. So I'm going to show you how to actually draw one of these bumblebees as it's the only tricky thing to do in this spread and actually when you know how to do it they're really quite simple so I'm going to go through it step by step with you now and leave this set up in the corner so that you can see if if you're interested if you actually want to see me set this bit up that'll be in the corner in a second and okay so I start off with this oval shape for the top part of the body and it's really, really simple little oval. Then underneath I'm drawing, it's almost like the bottom of a teardrop, um, but with a slightly pointier end. And then I'm going to do a little semicircle for the head shape. The wings are just sort of, it's hard to explain the shape, but you can see what I'm doing and it, they don't have to be perfect at all to look good. Then I'm doing little circles by the head and I'm just fattening up that head a little bit. <laughs> little circles um, either side of the head and just underneath the wings of the body for the joints. And then just some little squiggly lines for its little arm, leggy feet things. <laughs> so it's really simple. I'm adding a couple of little antenna things and that's when I go in, oh no, not yet. <laughs> then I um, do the little patterns on the wings and those don't have to do de de they don't have to be neat either it really doesn't matter then this is where I go in with my pen when I find it uh, there it is and I'm gonna start with that body and I'm just no I'm not I'm gonna start with the head <laughs> I'm gonna start with the head go around the head and then the body part I'm doing little tiny lines to make it look almost fluffy and I'm just following the shape of that semicircle and I do the same for the bottom half of the body um, with these little teeny teeny tiny lines and I'm just following that shape roughly I'm not going um, you know mad with it and then I'm drawing in the wings those sort of little patterns on the wings, I tend to keep a sort of triangly shape for the middle bit and then just put some little offshoots coming from it. Um, and I do the same with the other side. And then I, I lifted the pen up here and held it by the edge just to show that you don't really need to be able to have a lot of control. They can sort of be squiggly and it doesn't matter. 
um, and then the little joints. Those seem to make a big difference. I don't know why, but those little balls seem to make it look better. And then the little legs. Oh, ain't it cute? <laughs> um, yeah, and the antenna. And then when I do the, I'm going to put the yellow down first because um, the Arteza pen, it's great for the most part, but with yellow, it does seem to, the yellow picks the, it picks the yellow up, the ink picks the yellow, it smudges. It smudges a little bit, so I'm putting the yellow down first. And then I'm going to do the little head black with my Tombow. And then when I do the sort of, the black stripes I'm sort of scribbling them in a sort of line so I'm making that sort of fluffy it's not a solid edge I'm trying to keep it sort of loose looking um, and I do one beneath a little bit around the head to make it look like the neck sort of attached nicely <laughs> and then squiggle 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 um, yeah, you can kind of just see what I'm doing. Just a few little lines and I'm darkening the very centre of the lines and the very bottom. So through the centre of that. So it just looks nice and soft. And then um, I just go in and colour those joints in um, with a bit of grey. And that's it. That's that's your little bumblebee done. It's really quite simple. It took me a little while to get used to the, the shapes and the sizes, but it didn't take long at all. So... Um, if you try it and you have success, let me know because I'd love to see if it is as doable as I think it is because I'm, I might be being optimistic. I am kind of naturally um, a bit artistic. So I'm hoping that this is doable for other people. So if you have a go and you like how it looks, let me know. Maybe tag me on Instagram so I can see what you've created because I'd really, really like to see. Um, and if you find this sort of mini tutorial bit, slowed down bit helpful, um, let me know in the comments and I'll try and do it more often if I do try and do anything a little bit more challenging. So yeah, that's it. That's all I have to say for that. <laughs> Start drawing your bumblebees. <laughs> So I finish off most of these spreads with a few little black hearts um, because I want to keep with the Valentine's -y theme. And then this font is actually uh, something that I saw on the Boho Berry, um, mm, Boho Berry Facebook page. And she did a printable not all well, printable or downloadable or something like that. Um, and I just sort of screenshotted it and used that lettering because I really, really like the way it looks. And I got a little bit fed up with the whole calligraphy looking things. So I'm going to use this font throughout the whole of uh, this monthly spread. But it's not mine. It's from Boho Berry. <laughs> So now we're on to my everything tracker where I track anything to do with my health. You probably all know by now that I have fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue. So I track my mood, energy, sleep, pain and productivity. And then I have my space for any notes I have about that day on the left. I find this page so helpful and insightful when it comes to working out what things I can actively do or change to improve my overall health. Because when I go back to look at this at the end of the month, I use my journaling pages, um, like the feeling pages, successes, gratitude, improvement and line of day pages to give me a better look at what's going on health wise, physically and mentally. I've also done a short video where I talk you through this process, so I'll link that one in the description as well. Next up, we've got my habit tracker, and I've changed it only slightly in that the top section are ones that in an ideal world I'd be doing every single day. I've been trying to get up between sort of five and six lately because I find that if I do my workout and stretching and journaling and any sort of personal improvement stuff first thing in the morning, I already feel like I've achieved quite a lot by nine in the morning and then it just sets me up for a more productive day. Plus at five in the morning, Lee and the kids are still asleep. <laughs> so it gives me some time to myself to reflect or just relax in my own company. But I've put all those tasks together because eventually I really do want to work up to doing those things every single day. I found a habit building hack from Improvement Pill that I explain in a previous video. And I'm pleased to say that it really has been helping. I've been so much more consistent with my planning and even drinking more water. So if you're having trouble building a habit, take a look at the video because I finally feel like I'm making some headway now that I'm actually trying that process. 
I added in this feelings page because I sometimes struggle with low moods and depression. So this page has several functions. The first is to just get how I'm feeling down onto paper because I find that it can really help if I have nobody to talk to about how I'm feeling to just get it out. The second is that when I'm going through a depressive episode, it can sometimes feel like it'll never end and I start to lose hope that I'll ever feel better. Depression can really screw with your perspective and memory, so it's good to be able to have something concrete to look back on and realise that it doesn't last forever. That doesn't, I said doesn't, <laughs> that it doesn't last forever and that there are lots of good times. I sound like I've got a lisp, <laughs> that there are lots of good times too. The last reason is that sometimes I feel like I'm following a similar cycle with my emotions or I'm repeating patterns in my relationships that are sort of making me feel a certain way. So it helps me to gain a bit of insight in that respect as well. I'm going to skip through setting up my meal log and my journaling pages now because they're no different than what I've done before and you can see how they turn out when I do my flip through at the end of this video. And if you want to know about more about more and if you want to know more <laughs> about my journaling pages, you can learn about them in my previous videos. I hope you don't mind me skipping ahead, but if I didn't, this video would be long <laughs> and I want to get to the good bit. So I'm just going to jump ahead to my February challenge. So I've titled this page, A Valentine's Day Gift for Myself. This page is going to be dedicated from me to me. I've gone through my Alpha Blocks book, and if you've been with me for a while, you'll have seen that in my last year's February setup. But I've gone through my book and I've picked out some positive words that I want to relate to myself. Now, you could do this challenge in one day or a couple of sittings, but I've purposely picked out 28 words so that I can write a little about each one every day just one line that way it's not so overwhelming <laughs> i'll leave all the words in the comments below so that you can play along if you want to i'm going to look at my word for the day and i'm going to write whatever comes to mind it could be an affirmation using the word or it could be recognition that i already possess that quality i could write a sentence about how i will gradually become that word I can take the words such as joy and I can write the things that make me joyful. I could write about how I aspire to make others joyful. I could write similar words like happy, excited, elated and so forth. There's no rules really. Well, I suppose the only rule is that whatever you write should be something that makes you feel good about the word or good about yourself. I'll be posting my sentences each day on Instagram, so play along with me and leave your sentences in the comments on my Instagram posts, or just do it in private purely for yourself. It might be helpful to make a mini ritual out of it, and so for the whole month, where you put aside 10 minutes each day, 10 minutes, <laughs> 10 minutes each day, just for you. You could light a candle or get yourself coffee while you write. The important thing is that you acknowledge that that time is just for you. You're taking time out to care for yourself and appreciate yourself. You're reminding yourself that you matter and you deserve some care and attention, especially from yourself. I've said it before, you are going to live with yourself 24-7 for the rest of your life, so make sure you nurture yourself and learn to enjoy your own company and appreciate who you are, because you can't get away from yourself. For your whole life, you will be coming along for the ride, so make sure you're someone you want to ride along with. Okay, so finally we are on to my weekly setup. It's the same as last month's again. It's unlike me to use the same weekly setup over and over because I get bored, so no doubt I'll change it up again at some point. But for now, I found it gives me all the space I need for my dailies, notes and tasks. And I just really like the overall look of it, so it'll be staying for a bit. <laughs> We're coming to the end of this video, so I'm going to wrap things up. If you're curious about the stationery I'm using, I'll list them all in the description below. Below. I'll also leave links to my Facebook and Instagram page. Leave me a comment in this video if you so wish. I love reading your comments and although I don't always have time to reply to each, I do read every single one. I probably get more excited than I should when my phone pops up with a notification that one of you has commented, but it's great and I love it so I don't care. <laughs> I'm more likely to be able to reply to comments straight after I upload because I'm already at my laptop and hopefully child free. So make sure you hit the bell so you'll be notified
notified about any future uploads if you want to get hold of me. Please subscribe if you like my channel and consider giving this video a like. I swear I did so many happy dances last month. I feel like I'm actually starting to get good at it. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the video and I wish you a really happy Valentine's Day. I hope you feel very loved and appreciated and I especially hope that that love and appreciation comes from within. I'll see you next time.